The Extremely Large Telescope, or ELT for short, will be the world's largest optical and infrared telescope under construction in the Atacama Desert, Chile. It can collect about 10 times more light than the largest telescopes and deliver 16 times sharper images than the Hubble telescope. An extraordinary telescope like this requires an extraordinary sight. The finalized location, the Atacama Desert, might appear like a dry, barren place at first glance. But it's this very property that makes it an ideal retreat for astronomers and other space researchers. The telescope would be mounted atop a thousand-foot mountain called the Cerro Amazonas in the northern region. With the added height and the clear sky, the ELT can peek far away in space to discover any Earth-like planets called exoplanets or any sign of extraterrestrial life. This would answer the question, are we alone in this universe? After all, there's always this probability that another equally intelligent species exists somewhere in the universe. The telescope would also facilitate our understanding of black holes, dark energy, the evolution of distant galaxies, the creation of the universe, and much more. The first exoplanet, 51 Pegasi, was discovered in 1995 and the discovery backed a Nobel Prize. Since then, over 4,000 planets have been found orbiting stars other than our Sun from super Jupiters to Earth and Mars-sized planets. Using the magnifying power of ELT, we can obtain direct images of some of these planets and even look for signs of extraterrestrial life. Astronomers are interested in finding Earth-like twin IE planets with the same habitable conditions as the Earth, and by 2026, the ELT aims to find several of them. But how exactly will the ELT perform all these marvels? The telescope will have five mirrors, all of different shapes and sizes, but will work together seamlessly to deliver observations with more clarity than ever before. Three of these mirrors are curved, the other two are flat. The main mirror would be 39 meters in diameter, consisting of 798 hexagonal segments. This is by far the largest main mirror made for a telescope. A mirror of that size can't be made out of a single glass, let alone transported to the lonely Atacama Desert. Since the segments have to work together as a single mirror, a lot of precision is required. This would be challenging as the whole structure would be in constant movement. To achieve the required results, the segments need to be maintained and shaped to an accuracy of tens of nanometers, 10,000 times thinner than a human hair across its entire diameter. That's why each side of the hexagonal segment will have an edge sensor that detects the relative position of adjacent mirror pieces. However, even after this precaution, the mirrors would still require regular maintenance. Each mirror would need to be recoded every 18 months. But let's not forget that there are five mirrors with hundreds of segments. This means that every day, two segments would be removed, recoded, and reinstalled for the rest of the telescope's life. That's a lot of hard work, but it's worth it as segments will collect tens of millions of times as much light as the human eye. The main structure of ELT will support five mirrors plus all the support equipment. The 32-foot central tower sits in the middle of the main mirror and holds the rest of the four mirrors. Overall, when fully equipped with the optics and the scientific instruments, the telescope will weigh around 4,600 tons. For supporting such a massive weight, the main structure should be stable even in instances of Chile's frequent earthquakes and wind effects. At the same time, it should be light enough so that the telescope doesn't buckle under its weight. The azimuth structure or the horizontal support has two huge platforms, large enough to rotate and bear its burden. In a nutshell, the building resembles a circular football arena. Building a telescope like this isn't an easy feat, nor is creating two weekly videos for visionary builds. So kindly go ahead and subscribe to our channel to show your support. After all, it's free, and you'll be getting two new videos each week. That's a win-win. We've also dropped some exciting merch for you, which you can purchase through the link in our description. Enough with the self-promotion. Let's return to our telescope. The sophisticated and overly expensive equipment needs to be shielded from the harsh conditions of the desert. And, as you might have guessed already from the pictures, a giant metallic dome will house the main structure. The dome will be about 262 feet high and have a diameter of about 290 feet, giving it a footprint roughly equivalent to that of a football pitch. The upper part of the dome will rotate to allow the telescope to point in any direction through its large observing slit. The rotating part includes two motorized heavy doors that remain closed during the day but open at night for conducting observations. The dome itself is made of aluminum cladding which allows thermal conditioning of the telescope chamber during the day and limits radiative cooling during the night. Each door weighs 600 tons and can separate to leave a 41-meter aperture. This rotating structure is also equipped with special cranes to allow handling operations during the day when the slits are closed. 
to prevent destruction from earthquakes, an earthquake protection system is located below the structure. Both the dome pier and the auxiliary building rest on shock absorbers mounted on top of the foundations to dampen earthquake vibrations. Once the dome's fully furnished, it'll have a mass of around 6,100 tons. On 26 April 2010, the ESO Council selected Cerro Amazonas as the site for the ELT. This place is 80 miles away south of the town of Antofagasta and about 12 miles from Cerro Paranal, home of ESO's very large telescope, VLT. However, the decision wasn't an easy one. There are many equally strong contenders on the list, like Cerro Macon in Argentina, the Canary Islands in Spain, and other sites in North Africa, Morocco, and Antarctica. Many factors were taken into account, like the number of clear nights, temperature, humidity, and other ground realities, like where the crew would live, supply electricity and water, etc. The final report crowned Cerro Amazonas as the winner as it has the best balance of sky quality for all the factors considered. It can also be linked to ESO's Paranal Observatory. Cerro Amazonas and Paranal share the same ideal conditions for astronomical observations, including over 320 clear nights per year. In addition, there are very remote sites in the Atacama Desert, offering some of the darkest skies on Earth with virtually no light pollution from human civilization. Just a year later, an agreement was reached between ESO and the Chilean government that included the donation of 73 square miles of land surrounding Cerro Amazonas with a concession of 50 years. Very soon, the construction started in full swing on top of the Amazonas mountain to complete the platform. This platform was huge with 492 by 984 feet as its dimension. 220,000 cubic meters was removed to leave behind a 60-foot cavity on the mountain. What's surprising is that ELT was planned to be much larger than this. In 1998, ESO started experimenting with a colossal telescope with a 100-meter main mirror. This was aptly named the Overwhelmingly Large Telescope, short for OWL. The owl, just like the bird, would have extraordinary nighttime vision, but a project on this scale would be too complex and too risky, not to mention its astronomical cost of 1.5 billion euros was too much for the member countries of ESO. Undeterred by this setback, ESO conducted a new study with the help of 100-plus astronomers to discuss plans for a smaller but equally reliable telescope. Early designs proposed a 42-meter main mirror and a 5.9-meter secondary mirror. Even then, the mirror size was again slashed by 13%, which reduced the project cost from 1.27 billion to 1.055 billion euros and should allow the telescope to be finished sooner. The project received preliminary approval in June 2012. ESO approved the start of construction in December 2014, with over 90% of the funding of the nominal budget secured. With the start of construction in 2017, the first technical use of ELT is planned for 2028. The extremely large telescope will have an expected lifespan of more than 30 years. Live webcam from the ESO website shows that the platform, which is the fixed portion in the metallic framework, is almost complete. The base camp is located 1,000 feet downhill where the construction staff is lodging. A single road connects the base camp to the construction site where cranes and other construction materials rest. To give an idea of the scale of ELT, you can look at this side-by-side -side comparison with the Statue of Liberty. The famous Statue of Liberty is 300 feet high, while the ELT has a slight height of 262 feet. Upon completion, the ELT will make use of its incredible optical strength to resolve the mysteries of the universe. It'll use eight high-powered lasers that create an artificial 3D map of the atmosphere between the telescope mirror and the top of the sky. This technique improves the telescope's resolution by 500, providing premium quality sharp images. The ELT isn't the only telescope under construction in the Atacama Desert. Another powerful telescope called the Giant Magellan Telescope is also underway. It's located in the southern part of the desert in the Las Campanas Observatory. It's expected to have a resolving power 10 times that of the Hubble Space Telescope and 4 times that of the James Webb Space Telescope. However, it'll be unable to image in the same infrared frequencies available to telescopes in space. Seven of the world's largest mirrors will make up its 25.4-meter primary mirror, and while it can't top the ELT in size, it has a double cost of 2 billion euros. Nevertheless, the future of astronomy seems to be exciting. By opening new windows into the universe, the ELT and other telescopes will make discoveries that nobody's ever even thought about. This will trigger theorists to find explanations, observers to verify and find new targets, and engineers to continue pushing the boundaries of technology. What do you think about the ELT? Share your thoughts in the comments. That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.